a lot of this country around here is still untouched. It's such a rare thing to see such beauty like this anymore. It brings you back to that time. Location is definitely a character in the film. You can't shoot a, a Western in something that's so dependent on the outdoors and not have the location. Pretty well captures the essence and spirit of Cheyenne territory of where we're at here. Almost mountainous mounds of prairie that uh, are green and lush and animals everywhere. It's almost an opportunity to go back in time, as a matter of fact. We have been fortunate enough to rent from the Satina Nation 15,000 acres for our production. So our set is actually, is, is, as far as you see, is us. Well, when I came here, um, I saw this amazing prairie, which part of it you see behind me, and this unbelievable place where you can, you can find an almost unlimited horizon. And our story requires us to be in the middle of nowhere, building a railroad across in a wild, open Indian territory. We've carved out a little valley where we can shoot in all directions. We've built 2,000 feet of track. Uh, we've built a locomotive that moves and works and functions. For all intents and purposes, uh, we have rebuilt the town. Dark night here in hell, brothers and sisters. But come on in. The look at Helen Wheels is uh, fairly dreary, very dusty and dirty, gritty looking, generally. Pretty ugly and a terrible life to live. The style of the show is, is supposed to be dirty but beautiful. The first step in designing Hell on Wheels was research and more research. We found every picture we could possibly find. We knew we needed some horrors and we knew we needed some places to drink and we knew we needed the preacher to be there and we knew we needed the train reality. The town kind of grew out of an organic reality then. It was basically designed by the people that dressed it and put it together really. My name's Paul Healy. Welcome to Hell on Wheels. I'm the set decorator, and I'm in charge of making this town feel lived in. The set decoration department takes off where the art department leaves. The art department builds the basic structures, designs the sets, and then we make it feel like it's a real world by adding elements to it. From the saloon, it's not quite parallel. It's arced off yes. about 30 degrees. We had three weeks to put this town together. We started out, we were gonna have 37 tents here, but it just doesn't sell the story. So now we're up to uh, 75 tents. Every day, it just keeps getting bigger. So this is the butcher shop. These are just molded rubber. And then this is just styrofoam painted. And then every now and then we'll have a dead deer hanging or a, a few rabbits or some chickens. So this is the church tent. John Blackie designed this so that when you're out the front of this, there's a big cross. So the whole structure is held together on a large, on a large cross. It's the only holy place in this, in this whole place. The rest is who are houses and saloons and sinful places, really. This is the blacksmith slash wheelwright. This is Hell on Wheels. This town did move every few days. So obviously there's a lot of wagons involved, a lot of horses, so a blacksmith and a wheelwright were crucial. I expect no further delays in making the 40 miles by the government deadline. Am I understood? This is Durant's train. He's the architect to the railroad. And this is kind of where he conducts his business. He's well appointed. He's got a commode. He's got a nice tub that he can get filled up and get himself clean every day. He's got a valet and, you know, he's living the life compared to the people out there. So it's in you know, it's a nice contrast. The thing I want the audience to feel when they look at Hell on Wheels is as if they were in that world, in that time frame, right after the Civil War, building the Transcontinental Railroad. It's as if you had fallen into a faded photograph from that vintage, a little bit dog-eared, kind of uh, muted colors, and kind of an aged photograph quality. Imagine a documentary that was shot in those times. We have to be authentic. The story deserves that and the audience demands that. Whenever you're doing a period dramatic piece, the best thing about it is everything you have to put in front of the camera because you can create a world that is totally within your control. 75 tents and hundreds of extras and it all comes together and Mother Nature really helped us out for the first month. It didn't stop raining. The mud was so deep that you couldn't walk. It would suck your shoes off. And that's kind of how they lived there. Hell on Wheels Season 1 is now available on iTunes. iTunes.com slash TV slash Hell on Wheels.
For more exclusive video, go to amctv.com.